Alright, it will be time to take a look at the uh, Harby. The Harby is quite a popular battlecruiser. A lot of players like to fly this ship and I have to say the Harby is also a very good looking ship. All Amar ships are gold plated and this ship is of course no exception to that rule. And I have to say it does uh, have a very nice hull design as well. It is indeed a very pretty ship and this Tenocor does look good as well. Alright, let's quickly take a look at the uh, ship info, trade description, and then I'll show you the build of this ship. Plus 25% minimum laser optimum range, plus 25% minimum laser accuracy fall off, and it can fit command burst modules. Advanced medium laser upgrade bonus will give you plus 6% medium laser damage, minus 10% medium laser capacity need, and the Bella Cruiser command bonus will give you minus 5% inertia modifier. So the Harby isn't quite a tanky Bella Cruiser, the Brutix has a 5% bonus on arm repairs, while the Harby has a inertia modifier bonus. The Harby has 1 drone, 7 high slots, 3 medium slots, 5 low slots, 3 combat and 3 engineering rigs, 30,000 defense, which is pretty good. The Harby is a armor tank, after all this is... The capacitor on this ship is very good, 4727 gigajoules, recharge time is 546 seconds, recharge rate 41.64 gigajoule per second. The Harby can lock 6 targets, signature radius 222.7 meters, scan resolution 226 meters, 19.4 is the sensor strength. The Harby is not the fastest, although I have to admit uh, it's also not that slow, the modifier bonus does allow the ship to warp pretty quickly. Now on to the build, 1019.10 DPS, I use the C-type Pulse lasers, they have a very nice range of 20.48 kilometers, accuracy fall of 8.13, tracking speed is 50.7, which honestly is pretty good. One scrambler, one web, and I have a skirmish command bonus. Now this build is basically a PvP and PvE build, can be used for both scenarios, and I didn't have any issues with it at the moment. Dual adaptis. One large armor repair, one afterburner and a capacitor battery. The rigs are focused on DPS, dual burst aerators and one collision accelerator. The engineering rigs are also focused on capacitor, dual capacitor control circuits and one auxiliary thruster. Overall, that's the combination that I like. The nano core is the Concord Pass Exile Core and I did pick the plus 22.50 percent extra armor repair basically the same core on the Brutix you can pick the Ascension Core for DPS or if you like tank then this core is the way to go I have no upgrades basically I only use the primary stat for most ships 52,000 is the overall EHP and you can take a look at the other stats of the ship, which honestly are not that bad. Actually, very nice. Okay, let's undock and actually no, uh, let me let me go and take a look at the implants. So we have three different choices: thermal for tank, and focused or pulse crystal for DPS. And I'll first cover the tank thermal implant. So the level 15 attribute gives you plus 20% extra armor resistance. The units are focused on on armor repair and I'll just swap this one for passive capacitor battery bonus. This is to maximize the, the capacitor battery so that the armor repair can run for as long as possible. Okay, let's see. 58,000 hit points. You can see the Resistance here, definitely a good bonus, and 70 minutes is the capacitor runtime, which is very nice. Now, of course, uh, let's not repeat the same mistake from last time, let me fuel up, because the skirmish modules do use fuel, and this is one thing that you should never forget if you are using a skirmish module, always pick up fuel. Let's undock, and let's see the active stats of the ship. Now 1000 cold DPS with this tank is actually really good 
so the DPS is not going to be a problem and with this tank you will outlast most targets while dealing a very good DPS. Okay, let me quickly adjust all the modules because, well, uh, that's the addition at this moment. Now, you'll be surprised by the speed of the Harby. It's actually a little bit faster than the Brutix, although the Brutix has the faster base velocity, which is honestly interesting. Okay, let me get the armor repairs on this page and the capacity battery on this page, and now the the module out is the way how I like it. And let's turn on the adaptives and afterburner. And let's take a look at the active stats. 84,000 hit points, 79, 73, 69 and 67% armor resistance, which is honestly not bad. 17,000 armor hit points, which is a lot of armor for a battle cruiser. The DPS is the same, the ship goes 691 meter per second. Now with the skirmish command you get extra web range, you get extra scrambler range, after burner speed, you get a lot of very very useful stuff and this can be used for solo, it can also be used for a fleet, Both in both scenarios it works really really well. And let's take a look at the ship stats, the hit points are the same, the capacitor 6 minutes and 2 seconds, 210 meter is the signature radius and 320.33 meter per second is the after burner speed, a slight increase but again, it's going to be very helpful in some cases. And the warp pressure time 5.71 seconds, which is really fast for a battle cruiser. Now you can also add the armored command burst, and this is going to be very useful if you are a armor tank, and if your ship is built for tanking, works really well with combination uh, with the thermal circulation implant, and. Undocking. The ship should be quite tanky now. We will see the active stats here in a moment. Okay, after burn on, you will lose the speed, you will lose the extra weapon scram range, but you will get extra tank, which is also very important. 84,000 hit points. And with the armored command module active, the tank is 95,000. 82, 76, 72 and 71% resistance, again very very nice. Now you can technically go and do a brick tank on this ship, can be good for a bait I guess if you are in a scout or in quest normally waiting at zero, but I usually prefer to have a propulsion module on my ships, but again you can make this ship even more tanky. And speaking of tank, this is a full on tank build now, I changed the rigs into one anti-explosive pump, one, t one anti-kinetic pump and one nanobot accelerator to improve the armor repairer and now it repairs 1861 every 6.28 seconds. Now of course the Brutix armor repairs are um, a lot better but again the Brutix has a bonus on armor repairing and uh, that's the main difference. between Undocking. these two ships, but the Brutus can also have higher DPS because of the um, because of the blasters. Okay, now let me take a look at the uh, at the tank, 96,000 hit points, 79, 73, 81 and 82% resistance and with the with the skirmish active, it's 110,000 hit points, and the resistances are also slightly higher. And this is a very, very, very tanky Bellacruz. The DPS is still okay, 735.21 DPS, and that still should be enough for most cases. Now, the PvP build that I would use uh, is this one, 1344.79 DPS with the C-type medium lasers. And this is the build that uh, I use on some of my other battle cruisers, the build that I use on my faction cruisers, and honestly, I really like this combination. Now, with this build, you can easily 
use the focus or pulse crystal now the focus crystal gives you dps over time and it's not really suitable for short engagements basically if you are shooting a battleship or if you're shooting something uh that's having that's ha that has a lot of tank then i guess the focus crystal can work also if you miss the target then you lose all the dps on the focus crystal and this is why in a lot of in a lot of short engagements, the pulse crystal is actually the better choice. Now the general units are going to be the heat sink units, and they do improve the DPS quite a bit once the implant is active. So let's undock and let me show you the active stats uh, on this build. This build is excellent for low sec, excellent when you are jumping on the target and of course works really well in a fleet and i will show you some of the other some of the other uh, builds that you can use as well 1492 dps the dps will slowly go up the tank is also still pretty good 57,000 hit points it has a lot of armor so a build like this is not going to be suffering from from tank 62,000 with the armored command burst and of course you have the damage control which can be used as a panic button the dps is still going up 185,000 hit points this will last for about 13 seconds excellent for a panic button excellent for buying as much time as possible while the target is going down now they have nerfed the focus crystal a little bit and uh, the charge time is now taking a little bit longer but it should not really affect the the results and the ship is quite fast 1.3 kilometers per second almost 1.4 kilometers per second with the mac web drive which makes the harby excellent for the hit and run type of type of combat of course, not as good as the Cinnable. After all, the Cinnable is ridiculously fast, but the Harby can also do something similar. 3195.54 DPS and it's still charging. This is still the cold implant only DPS. I will show you the heating DPS. Now, of course, in real combat situations, small targets are not going to live this long. So this implant is really not the not the best for this type of combat that we usually do. And I will show you the pulse crystal performance after the focus crystal. And finally, this took a while. Charge at 100%, 180%, 3.8 thousand cold DPS with one heating active. The DPS is 4.6 thousand. With the second heating active, it's 5.5 thousand, and with the third one, it's 6.2 thousand. Honestly, pretty solid DPS. However, for 99% of targets, you will never actually see this DPS in action because most targets will already be destroyed, or will warp out, or there might some, there might you know something else might come up and. Uh, it will probably prevent you from doing that damage on target. If the target is super tanky, then perhaps, but in most cases, that DPS will never be applied into real use. And now let's go to the Pulse Crystal Implant. Now this one is the, the implant that I would use. It gives you a instant DPS boost of 75%. And the unit setup is going to be the same for, for PvP, basically only heat sinks. And now let's take a look at the cold DPS, 125,000, so it does give you a nice cold bonus as well. Let's unlock and let's see the maximum possible performance of this implant. This is basically what I would use, the combination that I would use for low sec when I have a target, just land close to a target. I would probably use the skirmish because I can scramble at a longer distance, which again is going to be very useful for PvP can be used really well for solo and now let's see the cold dps with um, 
with steam plant 2.5 thousand again this is pretty good almost 2.6 thousand and this is already more than enough dps that you will need for for combat with the skirmish i guess you can make the ship more of a solo pvp ship and i'll probably try to do that 2.6 thousand with, with one heatsink with the second heatsink it's 3.7 thousand and with the third one the dps is at 4.1 thousand and this honestly is really good this is a instant damage boost that you get once you activate the implant and the heat sinks and for pvp for short combat this is going to be much much better than the focus crystal now for the pulse crystal we can do a build like this with one large capacity battery basically this will keep your capacity running for as long as possible and the capacity stability is really good we can also do with a armor plate this is the build that replicates the build on the brutix with the armor plate you will get a lot of armor and it will be the ship will be quite tanky but you will lose some maneuverability and you will lose some some speed 29000 armor hit points that's a lot of armor for a cruiser for a battle cruiser it is nearing the hit points of a battleship and that is honestly very impressive undocking let's undock and let's see the overall the overall active stats the armor plate the, this buffer this buffer tank is actually what i use on the cinnabal in most cases just a shield tank but an armor tank works the same way 1.2 thousand 1.2 km per second is the current speed so i lost about 200 meters per second but i do get some really good tank out of this thing now it has 8000 hit points with the armored command burst and with the panic button you get some nice resistance for 13 seconds 238000 hit points 86 82 79 and 78 percent resistance if you combine that with armor plates you get a really really tanky cruiser i mean bella cruiser so that's the pvp builds that i would probably use basically does give you very good dps and it also gives you some good tank and for short combat it does work really really well now this is a pve build for missions for high sec missions for low sec missions i would use the tanky the tank builds that i showed you on the start but for a high sec you don't really need a lot of tank for high sec i would go maximum possible dps and you can do the dual armor pair build with the large nosferatu or with the command burst module both work really well i personally prefer to have the command burst module for the extra tank and speaking of tank let's take a ride with let's take a quick ride with the with the harbin let's see how the ship works so the game gave me a mission in Nolsec, so I'll just go and do the mission in Nolsec, I guess. Overall, the Nanocore does look really good. And again, you can go for full DPS, but for full DPS, go get the Ascension Nanocore. Basically, that's the DPS Nanocore. And I know that the Ascension Nanocore is not, is not very pretty. Uh, mostly because of the yellow color that is, you know, uh, meh at best. I don't really like it. I know a lot of other players don't really like the core, how it looks, but the, the damage boost that you get out of the core is really impressive and definitely attack. good for a DPS build. So, I have the focus crystal here. And the focus crystal is player's favorite for missions because it does give you that DPS over time and in PvE in missions you don't have to worry about missing targets especially if you are using beam lasers as a sniper. Now the Harby can do a beam laser build just fine and it can orbit at 45-50 kilometers which is you know, honestly very impressive but the harbi has very nice 
range with the pulse leathers. Basically, the pulse leathers on the Harby have range of beam leathers on a normal laser boat, so I believe the pulse leathers is the way to go, and of course, it has some very good tracking. The Harby is one of those ships that can easily defend itself against a lot of cruisers, a lot of frigates, a lot of interceptors, because of its phenomenal laser performance. With beam lasers, that is a little bit more difficult because of the tracking, but with pulse lasers, it is very easy to defend yourself against pirates and other PvP pilots out there. You can technically use the tracking computers on the Harbi, and if you want to even improve the performance of the tracking computers, you can go and use the general unit for the tracking computers, that will give you some crazy tracking. But it's not really required to, to do that, the ship already by default has amazing stats and I believe I will kill this mission very quickly. Now I did talk about the Focus Crystal being nerfed and I believe more nerfs are coming to the Focus Crystal. Slowly uh, I believe that most of the implants will be will be nerfed. I believe it's about time to do that. So if you miss the target, you lose all the all the stacks. Which is the single largest disadvantage that you will encounter with the box of crystal. In high sec that issue is not as apparent as in PvP or not as apparent if you are using a close range boat. So it's best to use if you are a sniper for brawling it can be useful but against fast moving targets it can miss and if you miss well uh, you lose the you lose the DPS. I think it's uh, if all turrets miss. If one turret misses then it might not be a problem but if all turrets miss then you do lose the DPS. The pulse crystal doesn't really suffer from that problem although the pulse crystal does increase the capacitor usage so with the pulse crystal a Nosferatu and a capacitor battery is definitely recommended so that you maintain a higher level capacitor throughout the battle and of course the capacitor rigs might also be the way to go that way you maximize the capacitor stability uh, on the on the ship and I believe there is also this one rig that reduces laser capacitor usage you can do a rig integration combination and add a bunch of these rigs in the combat rig section so that you even reduce the capacitor usage more and that way the ship's capacity will probably be stable at about 80-90% although again not really required because the DPS output and capacity stability are already pretty good by default. The Harby has one of the best capacitors out of any battle cruiser and that is to be expected after all Amar ships have really good capacitors. There are some exceptions for example the Apocalypse Striker that ship I believe in the end that ship will be so nerfed it will be nerfed into basically being useless. That's what I uh, what I feel will happen to that ship in in couple updates from now. But overall, I really do like how the Harbi performs, and I was inspired to make this video because in the last like two weeks uh, I have destroyed one Harbi, well, I have destroyed that Harbi multiple times by now, and that Harbi keeps dropping B-types, so uh, I really hope that I can help uh, players in building their ships in a better way, because that Harbi had very expensive modules and probably still has very expensive modules, but they don't have a very good build, they have basically a B-type hybrid tank they combined both shield and armor repairs on their ship and of course 
a ship like that is a very very easy target and I got about 20 B types from that player because they just keep coming back with the ship and I just keep destroying them but again I really hope that uh, I can help players in building their ships in a better way well then uh, this was a very run a very very fun little run with the harby overall a very a very fun ship to fly and with that being said I really hope that you enjoyed stay safe fly safe and as always I'll see you next time